Spotlight on Ripley's. Meet the world's greatest free throw shooter. Beating the NBA's best at almost 80. Now, Dr. Free Throw shows you how to go from rank amateur to sinking every single shot with his seven secret steps. Be there when this free throw king takes to the court with Kelly in tonight's Ripley's Challenge. The Ripley's World Tour travels to Cambodia, where locals aren't scared of spiders. It's the other way around. You'll flip when you find out why these villagers love to devour an eight-legged lunch. Do you know your 50 states? Colorado. Oh, I blew it. Ripley scoured the globe in search of a geography whiz. But who knew we'd find her in preschool? Obama, Alabama. Plus, the amputee about to be fitted with a pair of dead man's hands. How one kangaroo survived being caught in the crossfire in tonight's Unbelievable Animals. And get ready for a glimpse into the future of photography. Personal 3D statues at the push of a button. It's me. It's little me. <laughs> Only on Ripley's Believe It or Not. You're just in time for Ripley's Believe It or Not. And Kelly Packard kicks off tonight's first unbelievable story. Thanks, Dean. I'm standing half court at the Rossmore Athletic Club in Seal Beach, California. Tonight, you are going to witness something truly unbelievable. Dr. Tom Amberry claims to be the best free throw shooter in the world. And for this Ripley's challenge, he's going to attempt to break his own world record of 305 free throws in just one hour. That's right, 305 baskets in one hour. That's over five baskets every minute. Tom, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Now, you are a living legend, a, a best free throw shooter in the world at age 79. That's amazing. How did you get started? Well, I, I was a podiatrist for 40 years, and at the age of 70, I retired. A friend says, in the olden days, you should play basketball. Why don't we go out and shoot baskets? Well, I played high school basketball 62 years ago, college basketball 54 years ago. So is it okay if I call you Dr. Free Throw? Yeah, you can call me anything you want to. <laughs> okay. Now, how many have you made in a row without missing? 2,750. Well, why'd you stop at that? They kicked me out of the gym. <laughs> okay, now you are the free throw coach for the Chicago Bulls, is that right? That's right. That's really exciting. I left them to come here to make the show. Oh, well, we're lucky to have you. Now, I know that you need to warm up a little bit, and while you do that, we're going to take a look at what it took for you to become the best free throw shooter in the world. Dr. Tom has always had a love for the game of basketball, and as a college player, he even set a national record. I played college basketball at the University of North Dakota and at Long Beach, and in 1946-47, I was the highest collegiate scorer in the nation. That's uh, a few years ago. Dr. Tom benched the game of basketball after college and went on to practice medicine. He didn't pick up another basketball for 40 years. Soon, he was shooting 500 free throws every day. And amazingly, this senior citizen had taught himself to play like a pro, but he had no idea how great he would become. I wasn't smart enough at that time to think that somebody in their 70s would become the best free throw shooter in the world ever. Dr. Tom was on a mission to be the best, and despite being distracted by a loud crowd of rambunctious kids at times, before long, Dr. Tom was winning every free throw contest in the country. Dr. Tom's collected 290 gold medals to date. It seemed that his ability to shoot the perfect free throw was stunning even the experts. And at the age of 78, Dr. Tom's second career took another major twist when he was hired by Bill Cartwright to help coach the Chicago Bulls. What he gives you is a basic idea of how to shoot them and a basic understanding of why the ball goes in. Bring it in there. Dr. Tom is in demand. He even coaches for Michael Jordan's basketball camps and travels the world teaching the art of the perfect free throw. 
So do you ever miss? Absolutely. Oh, but not very often, huh? That's right. <laughs> all right, well, I know you're ready and you're all warmed up, so let's get this going. We've cleared the gym here in Seal Beach so Dr. Free Throw won't be distracted. Though making a few shots with a loud crowd is not a problem, for this record-breaking attempt, the lights have been dimmed to prevent glare, and no one's allowed to come or go. Our official basket counter, Dara, is going to signal the start and the finish, and you'll have exactly one hour to break the world record of 305 baskets. Are you ready? All right, let's do this. Good luck. Like he's off to a good start. We'll be back throughout the show to update you on this record-breaking Ripley's challenge. Dean? Thanks, Kelly. Now, strong men usually have big muscles, right? Well, not Luan Dechenar. He was born without biceps or deltoids, but that doesn't stop him from acting like a human tow truck. And that's while seated in his wheelchair. Take a look. Being born with a rare degenerative disease, Luan Dekanar is a man who wasn't expected to live past his teens. But Luan is a survivor. And now, believe it or not, at 35 years old, he's attempting to pull a 3,400-pound truck 100 feet in less than a minute from his wheelchair. Nearly strangled by his own umbilical cord, Luan's mother remembers her son being born with an irreparably twisted body. Luan was born with his legs right in front of him, curled up, his arms behind his back. His, the cord was turned right around his legs. Doctors diagnosed arthrogryposis, a condition severely limiting joint motion throughout the body, leaving Luan with no biceps or deltoid muscles and with seriously dislocated hips. Convinced that Luan's muscle disorder would prevent his body from functioning normally, physicians didn't hold out much hope he'd live to adulthood. But brave little Luan hung in there. By the age of 15, he had gone under the knife an incredible 29 times. Thinking back as a schoolboy, yeah, I spent a lot of time in hospital instead of school. Determined to live a normal life, Luan pursued a growing passion for athletics. But would his condition prevent him from competing? He cannot lift his, his shoulders higher than the level of his head. I can pick my arm up like this um, with using triceps and back muscles. But as soon as I turn my hand open, I can't move my arm at all. If I want to drink something or eat something, I would have to lift it up with a straight arm and then drop the shoulder and head back to, to drink. With a fierce sense of competition, Luan immersed himself in sports. It wasn't long before he was winning medals in everything from swimming to shot put to his favorite, rugby. Luan was soon dominating disabled rugby leagues in South Africa and the US. Played on indoor basketball courts, this modified version of rugby gives the players control over their chair's movement. And even after taking some time off to get married and raise two kids, Luan was back at it, eventually earning the fearsome nickname, the South African Assassin. In all my lifetime, I've never seen a patient with this condition who has achieved that much. Today, at Atco Raceway, this strong man hopes to set a new Ripley's world record. By pushing his body to its absolute physical boundaries, Luan is attempting to pull this truck, weighing over one and a half tons, for a grueling distance of 100 feet. But to make the mark official, he needs to do it in under a minute. I think he could do it. He's a big guy. He hits me a lot of practice. I know how hard he can hit. Luan focuses his concentration as the truck is weighed. So it's a little bit heavier than we planned, um, but uh, I can do it. I'm excited and ready to go. With the truck attached to the wheelchair, Luan, the determined athlete who was born without biceps, straps himself in for the challenge. Five, 
four, three, two, one, go! Come on, Lloyd! Without using leg power and missing two major muscle groups in his upper body, this strong man struggles just to get moving. His wheels are spinning, but he needs more traction. Steadying himself, Luan begins moving forward. He's pushing himself even harder to make up for lost time. At 32 seconds, he hits the 50-foot mark, halfway. But at this pace, he won't break his sub-minute goal. The crowd cheers him on as Luan starts to pick up speed. Trying to close the gap quickly, he pumps the wheels furiously as he hits the home stretch. And he's done it. An amazing 100 feet in less than 51 seconds. A new Ripley's world record. I was thinking if it keeps on slipping, it's going to be difficult to complete this. I just moved my body backwards a little and put more weight on the back wheels and try to even it out a little. Luan Dehenar pulls a truck weighing over one and a half tons, 100 feet, in well under a minute, wheeling himself directly into the Ripley's record books. I think I get take on the world now. <laughs> You are about to meet a person who is a whiz at geography. Pick a country, and she will tell you immediately its capital. And she can recognize every single state in the union simply by its shape and location. She'll probably make a great teacher one day, but first, she needs to get through nursery school. This three-year-old from New Jersey likes all the normal kid things, like going for car rides and playing with her sister. But this toddler's anything but ordinary, because before most kids even know their ABCs, she already knows the map of the world. Born in 1998, Sanu Sarita has always been a happy, healthy baby. And it wasn't long before her parents noticed that their young daughter was taking an unusual interest in maps. Her parents believe their daughter's geography obsession began with her father's frequent business trips. My husband travels a lot. Wherever he goes, the little one wants to know where her dad has gone. When she was just little more than a baby, identifying countries and U.S. states became her favorite game, a feat made even more amazing by the fact that she's never yet set foot in a classroom and is just now learning to spell. Canada. Demonstrating her unusual talent for Ripley's, Sudan. this pint-sized prodigy warms up by pinpointing various countries around the world. But just how unbelievable is this whiz kid? <laughs> to find out, Ripley's hit the streets and put some pretty confident volunteers to the test. New Mexico. It's a weird, it's a weird. As these guys quickly found out, our game of find the state Ohio. is more difficult than it looks. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, 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 this is Arkansas. That's Texas. That's Oklahoma. It's over here. But for this toddler who can't even read yet, it's child's play. California. Oregon. Oklahoma. 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 I love it. 
And although kindergarten is still a year away for this three-year-old, she's already established herself as the go-to girl for those tough-to-answer geography questions. She's a One of my colleagues called up and said, uh, do you know what's the capital of North Korea? I said, I really don't know. Then he said, if you don't know, ask your daughter and tell me what it is. I said, okay, I'll find out and tell you. It worked. Oh, by the way, the capital of North Korea is Pyongyang. Next, what could be better than snacking on a sizzling platter of tarantulas? How about washing it all down with a can of soda made from ants? Plus, meet the couple converting their home into the world's biggest birdhouse. Do these dead man's hands have a mind of their own? And can 33 grown men possibly mount a single moving motorcycle? The unbelievable balancing act. Straight ahead, only on Ripley's. You're watching Ripley's Believe It or Not. Ah, Gay Paris, the city of lights. But what lies beneath the streets is a dark and macabre display that never fails to shock visitors. Believe it or not, the catacombs under Paris are the final resting place for more than six million dead. Beginning as individual rock quarries centuries ago, Paris's underground chambers were eventually connected and used as tunnels to store bodies exhumed from the city's overcrowded cemeteries. Throughout the years, the catacombs have continued to collect more and more bodies with ghoulish stacks of bones reaching six feet high and 10 feet deep, making this grim tourist attraction the largest burial ground in the world. Believe it or not. Power drinks are taking up more and more shelf space at the market these days, each one touting a special ingredient to give you a boost. Well, Ripley's got a hold of an unbelievable energy elixir on its way to American shelves. Its added ingredient has been used for over 3,000 years in the Orient. And there's no mistaking what gives this soda its pop once you see the label. Ants. Red and black ant fluid, to be more specific. This tonic claims to hold anti-aging properties to calm anxiety, boost the immune system, as well as improve your libido. Now, many people are afraid of spiders, and a big, hairy tarantula like this, forget it. But Ripley's found a village overrun by thousands of these arachnids. However, most locals don't worry about getting bit by spiders because it's actually the spiders who are on the menu. They creep, they crawl, they make most people squirm. But in this dusty little town, tarantulas aren't feared, they're eaten by the platter. Believe it or not, in parts of Cambodia, fried tarantulas are a popular snack. And each day, trays of the eight-legged treats are eagerly devoured by hungry locals. <laughs> Village children gather the spiders, which are very plentiful in the country's mountainous jungles. Risking painful bites, they use just their hands and sticks to flick the poisonous tarantulas from their burrows. Once caught, the spiders are brought home for preparation, then finished with a salt and pepper seasoning. And villagers are encouraged to enjoy them like potato chips. In addition to enjoying the taste, locals say tarantula eating promotes good health. Not only are they high in protein, but consuming the venomous spiders reportedly improves the circulation of pregnant women. Believe it. A 
Apparently, tarantulas do not taste like chicken. But parrots do, don't they, Grayson? Well, many of us probably understand the charm of a bird that can talk to you. Hello. Well, Mary and John Bradford definitely do. In fact, they share their home with hundreds of these fine feathered friends. But Ripley's will let you decide for yourself if living like the Bradfords is wonderful or for the birds. From the outside, it looks like any other suburban residence. But inside, it's been transformed into this. A humongous birdhouse, home to over 350 of them. Mary and John Bradford of Kannapolis, North Carolina, have been obsessed with caring for their hundreds of feathered friends since 1989, after forming a bond with this handicapped parrot named Paco. Soon, Mary realized she had an exceptional connection with these winged creatures. Yeah. Many people feel that I exude some sort of hormone that attracts these birds to me. What are you doing? I really felt that this is a gift. The couple became so obsessed, they converted their home into this 44,000 cubic foot aviary complete with waterfalls and trees. And although the birds are free to come and go as they please, it can create confusion, especially at mealtime. It's like a tug of war sometimes, trying to eat my breakfast, and they're especially keen on my cereal. But taking all these creatures under their wing doesn't come cheap. The Bradford's monthly budget for their sometimes overwhelming bird family is almost $4,000. And then there's the constant noise, and of course, the endless droppings. But the Bradfords claim each bird has its own personality. And despite the obvious downsides to having so many pets, they love each and every one of them. I really do feel like I've gotten into the bird's heads. I would like for people to call me a bird brain because it's the highest honor that somebody can pay me because these birds are so intellectual. Thank you. You're welcome. The Bradford's oldest bird is 70 years old. Grayson here is 20. Come here. Come here, little 20-year-old. He's just a baby. Just a little baby. A horrific explosion cost this cop both his hands. Now, the only replacements doctors can find come straight from a corpse. Find out if surgeons can give this fallen hero a grip from the grave. Plus... I'm Kelly Packard with Dr. Free Throw, who's made 83 baskets on his way to breaking the world record of 305 baskets in one hour. Find out if he makes it. And later, he's going to reveal his seven secrets on how you can make a free throw and never miss. And the high-tech machine transforming body scans into your very own mini-me. Now, back to Kelly Packard with tonight's Ripley's Challenge. We're back at the Rossmore Athletic Club in Seal Beach, California, where Dr. Tom Amberry, a.k.a. Dr. Free Throw, is on track to break the world record for the most free throws in one hour. That means that he has to keep his pace and make five baskets per minute. He is now up to 108 baskets with only 38 minutes left. We'll be back in moments with an update on this unbelievable Ripley's Challenge. If you ever lost your hands, what do you think you'd miss most? Catching a ball? Instant messaging? clapping for your favorite sports team? Well, hopefully, you'll never need to find out that answer. But while working on the bomb squad, Teo Kells was not so lucky. After losing his hands, all he yearned for was to caress his beloved wife once again. Now, there are some very graphic images in this story. After losing both of his hands in a horrible pipe bomb explosion, Policeman Teo Kells is returning to work with a pair of dead man's hands. Teo's job on the Austrian police bomb squad required putting his life on the line every day. And finally, it caught up with him when a suspicious package at a local airport turned out to be a pipe bomb. It exploded in Teo's grasp. The damage was horrific. 
the policeman's hands were gone. Unable to salvage anything below the wrists, doctors performed an emergency double amputation. Teo was devastated. Released from work, he couldn't even feed himself. Teo tried to settle into his new life, but then reports of a groundbreaking surgical procedure promised him a new beginning. For the first time, double hand transplants were considered a real possibility. Previously, the complexity of reattaching two human hands made it an impossible feat. But while it might be possible, year after year, Teo would have to wait for a perfect donor. Needed to match were sex, blood type, age, and bone size. Six long years later, his family received the news they'd been waiting for. Someone else's loss would hopefully be Teo's gain. The only catch, his new hands would come straight from a corpse. Going into the delicate surgery, a team of 18 doctors begin working round the clock. But they immediately find a problem. Teo's wrists don't fit the dead man's hands. Uh, therefore, if we put only the hand on, he had a stable wrist and he couldn't move in the wrist. Amazingly, to match wrists to hands, surgeons amputate even more bone from Teo's arm. As increased blood loss becomes an issue, the surgery proceeds. A grueling 17 hours later, it's over. And after 50 hours of sleep, Teo finally wakes up to see hands from a corpse attached to the ends of his arms. Now, only time would tell if Teo's body would reject the transplants. And even if reattachments worked, would the muscles and tendons function? After three painful months of therapy, Teo still lacked feeling in the new hands. Then, suddenly, one day, he felt something he hadn't experienced in years, his wife's touch. Dann hat meine Frau mit den Händen darüber gestreichelt und ich hatte das erste Mal gefühlt. Now, after the accident that stole his own hands, Teo continues working to fine tune his new pair. Teo can type, write, pick flowers, even ride his motorcycle. And amazingly, even his fingernails have started growing. But most importantly for Teo, he can touch his wife again even if the hands he uses once belonged to another man. Though he must take daily medication to prevent his body from rejecting the transplants, today, he's back on the job working for the police force again. For Teo, his dream came true, thanks to an incredible team of doctors and the donor who gave him a hand or two. Ich bin in Heute und immer dankbar unseren Herrgott und der Familie des Spenders. Theo has gained 80% of feeling in his new hands. Still ahead, they are among the military's most highly trained precision drill teams. Now, watch as these masters of balance attempt their most demanding feat ever in tonight's unbelievable act. Also, the heroic story behind the baby kangaroo who survived being skewered through the neck with an arrow. And forget ordinary flat photos. Now you can capture your image for eternity with these virtually instant custom icons. For the first time, I'll have porcelain skin, literally. The story behind these high-tech snapshot sculptures, next. Like most military forces, the Indian Army has an ultra-elite unit operating within its core. But their expertise has nothing to do with combat. Believe it or not, 33 Indian soldiers are going to attempt a record-breaking balancing act by mounting a single motorcycle. In 1990, the Indian Army formed the Acrobatic Motorcycle Team to demonstrate what is possible through teamwork. The Army carefully examined each soldier until they found the absolute cream of the crop. And today, countless hours of training will be put to the test as the Indian Army sets out to break the previous record of 32 riders. 
After going through their pre-ride preparations, the team is ready. The driver gets on first. Then, one by one, the men position themselves at the top of the frame, with soldiers on either side steadying them. Eight men fill the top row, trying to distribute their weight evenly. Next, the remaining soldiers carefully take their place on either side of the driver. Spacing and counterbalancing each man is critical if they plan to get the motorcycle moving. Slowly, they accelerate, hopping alongside until the motorcycle reaches a steady speed. Awaiting the command to jump, all the soldiers' feet leave the ground with precision timing as the driver speeds up to keep the bike balanced. Incredibly, they've done it. The Indian Army's motorized acrobatic team breaks their own record for the most riders on a single cycle, pulling off one very unusual and one very unbelievable balancing act. The Ripley's warehouse is home to some pretty strange artifacts. I bet you can't guess what these are. This is a pair of Arabian camel nose plugs used to prevent sand from entering the animal's nostrils during windstorms in the desert. You don't believe me? Well, it's absolutely true, just like this next story. Ripley's world of unbelievable animals. In Australia, kangaroos are everywhere, in all different colors, shapes, and sizes. But there's one kangaroo that sticks out from the rest, because this little joey was found walking the streets of Melbourne with an arrow through her neck, and she survived even after having it buried in her for two weeks. The small female kangaroo shocked people when she was first spotted roaming the city with a projectile skewering her neck. Victorian wildlife officers immediately set out to try and save her. Upon capture, she was rushed to the Melbourne Zoo Hospital for emergency surgery. Doctors soon discovered that the 14-month-old marsupial was suffering from a potentially deadly infection, indicating the young kangaroo had been living with the wound for some time. But miraculously, the arrow that pierced her neck managed to miss all vital blood vessels. After receiving a dose of antibiotics, Bella, as she was affectionately named, began showing immediate signs of recovery. And as incredible as it sounds, just hours after the delicate procedure, Good Bella. baby Bella is set free to reunite with her mother. Believe it. Still ahead. Playboy's Miss April couldn't sink a single basket until Dr. Free Throw stepped in and showed her his seven secrets to shooting success. Now she's 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Kelly Packard reveals the good doctor's secret technique. Next. Enter Robert Ripley's archives. Robert Ripley, leave it or not. <laughs> the year is 1948, and a football coach in Ventura, California, is testing a revolutionary new training tool, the motorized tackle dummy. Designed to cut down injuries by eliminating full contact between players, it also doubles as a moving target for throwing practice. But with a mind of its own, this invention proves to be more trouble than it's worth and coaches decide to stick with more traditional methods, permanently sidelining the tackle dummy. Leave it or not. Let's get right back out to Kelly Packard with tonight's Ripley's Challenge. Thanks, Dean. We're back with Dr. Free Throw, and he only has five minutes left, and he needs 28 more baskets in order to set a new world record for the most free throws in one hour. Now, Dr. Free Throw tells us that anyone can conquer the free throw line with a few easy steps. So let's take a look at his secrets. 
Dr. Tom's perfected what he calls the Tom Amberry method of shooting, a technique so simple he claims he can teach anyone to shoot a free throw without a miss. Playboy playmate Katie Lohman, who can't remember the last time she picked up a basketball, has agreed to put Dr. Tom's tips to the test to see if they really work. After dozens of attempts on her own, Katie can't make a single basket. It's clear she needs help. Here are Dr. Tom's seven secrets to shooting the perfect free throw. Step one is feet square, shoulders square to the basket. And you do that because you're shooting straight ahead. Step two, bounce the ball three times with the inflation hole up. And the reason you do it three times is because that puts you in the zone and gets you focused. Step three is thumb in the channel, okay. finger, finger in the right in line with the inflation hole. Step four uh -huh. is your elbow in. Okay. Elbow in. If you bring the elbow in, you're 50% better. Step five, you bend your knees and come up with the ball, with the shot, all in one smooth motion. Okay. Step number six uh -huh. is eyes on the target. When you're ready to shoot, then you look at the basket. Then I look up. Just okay. like a lens on a camera. Okay. Final step is to shoot and to follow through. Okay. So, you look at the basket, bend the knees, elbow in, okay. put it in the basket. Well, we know how to do it. Now let's see Katie put Dr. Tom's methods to the test. Couldn't be better. <laughs> Unbelievably, Katie makes her very first shot. Hooray! This is absolutely unbelievable. I never thought that I would be this good. <laughs> It's swooshing too, you know, like a swooshing noise. You're, you're a great student. You're a great student. Incredibly, Katie actually makes 10 baskets in a row without a miss, all thanks to Dr. Tom's seven steps to successful free throw shooting. Great. Don't, okay. don't break my record, please. Okay, I won't. <laughs> All right, we're back with Dr. Free Throw, and he only has about a minute to set the new world record. He needs four more baskets, and the pressure is on. He's tied the record. He's only got 15 seconds left to break it. He's broken the record with seven seconds left. All right! Unbelievable. Dr. Tom, come over here. You did it. How do you feel? Warm. I noticed you broke a little sweat. It's a hard work there, huh? That's right. I must say, Dr. Free Throw becomes the world's best shooter with an amazing 307 baskets in an hour, successfully conquering tonight's Ripley's Challenge and setting a new Ripley's world record. Unbelievable. Next, the high-tech body scan that captures your every curve in 3D sculpture. I'm really excited to see what I look like in stone. Ripley's checks out these personalized instant statues next. And the tiny pistol that shot one cowgirl straight to stardom and forged the image of the American woman forever. The true story behind this history-making feminine firearm. When Dean ventures into the Ripley's vault, next. Stories you can't imagine, people you won't believe. Ripley's Believe It or Not. For years, sculptors have immortalized the beauty and intricate details of their subjects through painstaking, time-consuming labor. But today's artists are taking a high-tech approach. And believe it or not, they can transform you into a treasured work of art almost overnight. Four years ago, Iversion, a California-based company, came up with the idea of making personalized sculptures. 
We incorporate new technology with a very traditional art form to speed up the time of creating the product. Today, Robin Cunningham has come to iVersion to have herself immortalized through their unique replication process. I decided to get a statue made because my parents are back home in Dallas, Texas. So um, I guess I can vicariously live through the statue that I sent to them. Robin begins by striking a pose. Then, utilizing a state-of-the-art computer, she's scanned from head to toe. The beauty of this process is that we can scan this, a person's image and be working on it immediately. Once the scan is complete, the data is compiled into a 3D model, creating a rough polyresin sculpture. Then, a more permanent soft stone statue is cast. To ensure quality control, each piece is hand inspected by one of the company's artists. Finally, after a full day, the sculpting process is complete. So what does Robin think of her new $400 mini-me? Oh, wow. Oh, how neat. Oh, that's so cool. I had no idea that it would be this lifelike and this realistic at all. And it is, it's me. It's a little me. <laughs> Believe it. Many of the artifacts here in the Ripley's vault were instrumental in great social change here in America. Take what looks like an ordinary pistol and common accoutrement from 1910. This particular gun belonged to Annie Oakley, the famous trick shot artist from back at the turn of the century. Annie traveled with Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show, and she was a pioneer in changing the perception of women's roles in both the American frontier and the world. Annie's ability to handle a gun better than a man opened many eyes to equality for women. Ironically, she did many of her tricks while blindfolded. Unbelievable? Believe it. Only those with the guts. All right, let's do this. Win the glory. <laughs> Factor. Back to back episodes. Tonight starting at 7, only on Schiller. Scare Tactics. Back to back episodes. Tomorrow starting at 7, only on Schiller. Scary Good.